Welcome to Bad Food Blog, and look what we've got today. It is, ta -da! look, the waffleizer arrived. The Paracel Stuffed Waffleizer. That's a long name. Quick and easy stuffed waffle maker. Creates five inch Belgian waffles, stuffed. PPIO free non-stick plates, indicator lights. Let's get on and do an unboxing. It's got so many cool bits of text around it. It's the first product I think I bought from PowerXL. This came from a television shopping channel. That is pretty weird, right? Let's have a look at it. So camera had to be a little higher than normal because obviously this thing's pretty high. Let's have a look what's going on inside. Guess what? I am incapable of opening plastic seal. Ah, there we go. Try not to tear the box open. What do we have inside? We have a scam me thing. Ooh, that's probably where I get the free gifts they promised. You know, ah, I was supposed to get some sort of digital cookbook with it. I imagine it comes from that QR code. Mm-hmm. Oh, this stuff is awful. You know what? I cannot throw the, I have to put this in a regular bin because polystyrene won't go in the recycling. So it has to go in a regular bin. It's not so bad when you've got such a small item. When you get like a TV or something, you end up with these giant pieces of polystyrene that you can't put in recycling. And breaking them up to put them in the normal bin just seems wasteful. Also, they should they could make this out of starch very easily and be very environmentally friendly. Ooh, the waffle iron. Caution hot, the entire surface appears to get hot from what I'm looking at here. You see this caution sign? It would appear that the entire surface is going to get hot. I'm pretty also weirded out because it's some sort of baker-like plastic. I thought it would be metal on the outside. But that's definitely plastic. And here we have the unique design of this thing. So you can see it kind of has waffling on the outside in the bottom of the top. And then there's this sort of gap you can fill. And that's what we're gonna do today. Now I've got to find something to put in it. So I'm going to have a quick scout around the kitchen. Obviously I'm going to have to get a cloth or a tissue and make sure it's clean and uh, everything else. And here we go. Oh, here's the recipe guide. See, this is the idea. Crispy bit, crispy bit, middle. Um, I think we could go for something like this, but with a bad food twist on it. Oops. Oh, a quick guide popped out the middle, which appears to be a recopy of this page. Ooh, doesn't that look nice? Wow. i say one thing, packaging and uh, the materials it comes with, pretty good so far. Okay, so step one, heat it. Step two, pour stuff in, add filling, pour more stuff on top, leave, and it's going to come out looking like that. Who else here thinks I'm going to, oh, there's another big piece of paper in the middle there. Some sort of warranty and owner's manual. Okay. Oh, look. Well, I'm going to use the pre sort of instant batter I have, which is for pancakes, but if I put an egg in it, it becomes a waffle batter. So I will go and make that. Let me have a quick look in the fridge and see what we've got there. Hmm. Lots of things. First things that comes to mind. Sorry, that's the cat feeder. Cheese. And ham. A cheese and ham waffle. I think that's gonna be perfect. I think we can grate some cheese, put it in, put it in, put it in the bottom, put it in the middle, put it in the top, and get some ham going. I think this is gonna be awesome. Let me get the ingredients ready. Uh, let me get an extension cord so I can keep this here. And uh, we'll see what happens. Although maybe the cable will be long enough, but typically these types of items come with incredibly short cables, less than a meter. <sighs> well, we're gonna be going over there where normally the hot stuff goes, which I'm not particularly that bothered about, but I'll get the ingredients ready. We get the camera set up and then we'll be ready to make my waffleized waffle. God, that's a stupid name, isn't it? So here we are at the station for the waffleizer, and I'm going to call it waffleizing extreme. 
And I turned it on. It says not to place your hands in it at any time. Don't ever do what I do. It's getting hot slowly. All right, let's go over some of the instructions while it's warming up. First off, important safeguards. One of the first things it says is do not use corrosive chemicals. Do not attempt to modify. The appliance is intended for use by people, including children. What? Is not intended for use by children. Okay, yeah. Or re reduce physical sensory. Oh, well, okay. Mm -hmm. Never use with an extension cord. One of the reasons it's plugged in over here. Do not let the power cord hang over the edge of the table. No problem. Oh, I changed the cheese for some spicy Mexican cheese from Sainsbury's. Uh, do not put any, do not fill with liquid. I mean, that's kind of the idea. We're going to put liquid in its batter. It's liquid. Um, that one just really weirds me out. Uh, wear oven gloves. I will do. Unplug immediately if it should emit black smoke. That one's, that one's kind of important, I think. Uh, hopefully that won't happen during this video. Electrical power, shut off. Indicator light, indicator. The rear indicator light doesn't have a red, it only has two greens. I'm supposed to turn it ha over halfway through cooking. So here we go. How to use this appliance. Pour the batter in, put the stuff in, pour some more batter in. Then about five to seven minutes during cooking, I turn it over. I don't open it, I then wait for it to be ready, okay? Interesting thing is, I think I'm gonna oil it. Uh, it's close to hot enough. Oh yeah, it's ready, okay. <sighs> I'm nervous about this. I hope you're nervous. Let's get started, shall we? For a start, let's start off. I've assumed I would have enough batter for two. Um, so let's start by Filling it to about halfway. Oh, I'm probably not going to have enough batter for two, actually. Let's see. There'll be this will be the overfilled one, and then there'll also be an underfilled one, I guess. And then some cheese. I'm only going to put the cheese in the middle for this one, and we're going to see what happens to the cheese, whether it makes it to the outside, because I'm thinking it will, because all I'm supposed to do now is pour a little batter on top and that's full. Now, that was enough batter for like six pancakes. So I guess now I close it. And right, whereas I feel I want to video this for five minutes, it's going to be very boring for you guys. So I'm gonna ask Alexa to put on a five minute timer. Alexa, five minute timer. Five minutes, starting now. And we were turning... You could listen to today's No. Just ask. Alexa, shut What's up. God, honestly. <sighs> that is a relationship I am not enjoying. Okay, now I'm going to turn this over later. And in the meantime, I'm going to pause the video so you guys don't have to watch. Quick update. We are about a minute and a half in and it's... It started doing it a little bit. It's now doing it a lot more. It's whistling. I move things away from it just in case. It looks like the clip's under an extremely large amount of pressure. I may have overfilled it. I'm gonna stand back in case it explodes and I'll keep videoing this bit. It might not all end up in the video though. If you can hear that noise, it's quite high pitched. I don't know if the microphone's going to pick it up, but it sounds like a kettle boiling. I should have only put half the batter in. Ooh, that green light going out means it's heating up again. I really hope it doesn't explode. It's going to be such a horrible mess to clean up if it does. Oh, it's very hot to the touch and there's a lot of steam coming out of it. It's also kind of bowed, so it's close at the front, close at the end, and sort of open in the middle. Sort of around here, it's sort of opening up where the steam is coming out. It looks like it's being flexed. Mm. 
My God, it sounds violent. Oh, I'm so worried it's going to pop open. Nothing's come squirting out of it yet, like my normal waffle maker, but I guess because it's got that big bowl, it's got potential to make a lot more pressure. I really hope I don't break it. Well, I'm going to stop filming now. That's tension over with. It doesn't look like it's going anywhere just yet. Okay, we're at the five and a half minute mark and um, wearing oven gloves um, because I'm worried about the superheated steam flying outside of it. It's just gone green again. It's at the point where I'm supposed to turn it over. So I'm going to try to do that without spilling anything. There we go. And I imagine that's going to generate a lot more additional steam and pressure. Interesting. Oh, so there's an orange light or a green light under. I prefer that system. Mind you, that might not be so great for people who are colorblind. So that can go green or orange, I guess. Uh, interesting. So when that goes green, it should be cooked, apparently. We shall wait and see. I think it's another two to three minutes now. Let's just uh, double check the manual quickly. Here we are. And uh, okay, uh, it doesn't say how long. Um, wow, I guess I'm going to wait till it stops spraying steam out the sides. Doesn't say how long to cook it for. I don't know when this is going to be done. I guess I'll let I'll let the the thingy turn off one more time, and then I guess we're there. Because oh, I don't want waffle batter in the middle. I do want melted cheese. So I'm starting to smell. Actually, um, um, this is this is amazing. Since we turned it over, I'm starting to smell sort of cook burnt cheese. So I think we're getting there. Obviously, I'm not opening it up upside down. I will be using the oven gloves and turning it up the other way. I think we're at that point now. Let's turn it over one more time. Give it a couple of seconds. Why, wow, there's still a lot of steam escaping from that. Yeah, but at what point a waffle's done, I don't really... Uh, when that green light comes on again, I'm going to say it's done. One more time, one more round. No, I think we're good. Okay. Turn it off at the wall. Give it a couple of seconds to allow the steam to calm down. And this has been cooking a good 10 minutes now. Normal waffle would be burnt to a crisp at this point. Okay. Let's open her up, I guess. Whoa, there's a lot of pressure there. Oh, wow. Ooh, that is impressive looking. Wow, let's... uh. Let's zoom in a little on that. That actually came, looks really cool. Wow. Um, right, let's get a plate and take it out. Uh -huh. I'm figuring this thing is the way I take it out. Uh, I'm 
I'm sort of stuck on how to get it out. <laughs> I mean, I kind of want to get something underneath and pop it up. I don't want to... Oh, is it going to come out as a whole? Oh my god, it did. It came out as a whole thing. Wow, look at that. It actually worked. Oh my god, we have a whole thing. Right. Let's leave this one to the side to cool for a little bit, because judging by the temperature that thing's at, it's incredibly hot. Right. Let's turn this back on. Let's get this back up to temperature and do the second one, which is going to be less filled than that one. Now, I don't know if this one's going to work as well, but the amount of batter needed for that one was absolutely humongous. That was enough for like four or three or four pancakes. So let's give this one a couple of minutes, let it get up to temperature. Because obviously, I think this is working really well. You can see the burning cheese smell I was talking about. It's coming from these parts here. I was kind of hoping we get to this. It's like a little pie pocket almost. Let's hope everything's cooked inside. We will find out in a couple of minutes. Do not worry, I'm just gonna put the second one on now. So, the second one, I'm not gonna go quite as far. I'm gonna cover the bottom. I'm then gonna shove all the ingredients in. Okay, which is everything remaining. These are the sort of number of ingredients I would have put in a large sandwich. But this is a lot more batter than you'd have had in a large sandwich. And this one's going to have more cheese in it, okay? Because we've got a lot of cheese left over. So this is a more content rich one. Hey Luna! Cat's back. She's been missing for about half a day. Are you hungry? I'm going to have to feed her. Hi, Luna. Wow, she sounds incredibly distressed. Okay, okay, we'll sort things out. I'm just sorting out this waffle making machine at the moment. There we go. Okay, I'm going to pause that and sort the cat out. And uh, see you guys in a minute when we taste test the first one. The second one is already cooking. So, here we are. We are going to try the first one. Uh, let's go for a classic cut down the middle. Wow, look at that. Oh, it actually worked. It's cooked all the way through. Still steaming hot. We have cheese and we have ham. So it does use a hell of a lot of batter. Um, but it does look almost exactly as advertised on television. Which I am weirded to say is surprisingly shocking. Let's give it a try. Mmm, yeah. Mmm. Yeah, it's, um, there's a lot of uncooked batter in the middle. Not badly uncooked, but it uh, could do with less batter. Oh wow, the spicy cheese is really coming through. Mmm. Mmm, well that works quite well. Mmm. Yeah, it's a little bit moist, more moist than I would like. Um, mm, better one out the second one. We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, pretty impressive. Really happy with it. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, let's have a look what the second one's going to come out like. This is really tasty. Damn, I thought this would end up being some sort of disaster. But it's not really. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Well, here we go. The second waffleizer waffle is ready. I'm going to uh, open it wearing a pair of oven gloves. I've unplugged it and let it cool down for a couple of minutes. There's still steam coming out. This one hasn't popped open like the last one. Ooh. Now this one had half the batter and twice the filling. So as you can see, we've got some crispy cheese going on all round. And because this one has more cheese in it, it's a lot greasier. There's a lot of grease going on here. But it seems cooked. And like last time, getting this sort of prime tool under it, <laughs> I can get it all out in one go. 
Whoa, that thing's hot. But there, yeah, let's turn it over. So, this is about two pancakes worth of batter rather than four in the last one. Because, say, this is where I would go. So, I should have been able to make four of these from what I did. Maybe four. Yeah, I get it. Maybe, maybe three or four. Maybe four, because I think maybe that was three times the amount of batter in the last one. Let's have a look at what this one looks like on the inside, shall we? Oh wow, so this one isn't quite as big. It's much lighter. As you can see though, it has the stuffed batter. It's fully cooked on the top and we've got the thingy cheese on the top. And yeah, it's falling apart because it's so full of stuff. Mmm. 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 Mmm, more cheesy, more hammy, a lot more spicy because of the increased density of cheese. But a lot more like a, a filled waffle than a waffle with some filling. This is far more dense in terms of the filling and lighter and fluffier in terms of the waffle. So you don't need to put quite as much in as they show on the picture, but it is going to eat through your batter quite quickly. This was only one egg's worth of batter. Uh, 125, 175 milliliters of water and 160 grams of flour. So, um, well, sort of flour, I say water, I mean milk, because it's a, it's a batter mixture I used, but only one egg. Yeah, not too bad. Um, thanks for watching. If you like what I do here, please subscribe. This has been a review and a taste test of the Woff Power XL Waffleizer. And remember that subscribe button and that share button is there for a reason. Thanks for watching, bye.